I was in disbelief. I was like, is this real? Is this a nightmare? Now at six, a TikTok influencer accused of murder could testify today what his mother said on the witness stand. For folks who have been insured for 40, 50 years, it's just, it feels like a covenant has been broken. Not a good neighbor? Well, the county resolution being introduced today to call out State Farm. I've never experienced it quite this strong, so it's been really bad. A new task force now to fight the Tijuana sewage crisis as more people get sick. You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. Good morning and thanks so much for starting off your Tuesday with us. 6 a.m. now, I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampour, and let's start off with your forecast. You might like what you see. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, so look at this. We do have a little bit of cloud coverage, but you already see it break apart, even in Coronado. Mm -hmm. Beautiful Hotel Dell showing off this morning. A sign that we actually will be warmer than yesterday. There's that sunrise coming on up uh, from our mountains camera, looking out towards the east, of course. And a lot of you might actually see the sun, even this morning. Take a look at your weather headlines. Better chance of clearing today. We're already seeing that. Still staying a little bit below average. And May Cray will still be on repeat through next week. Let's turn now to our top story here. The man charged with murdering his wife and her friend at an East Village apartment in 2021 could take the stand as early as today. CBS 8's Regina Yarita live downtown with more on his mother's testimony here. Regina? Yeah, guys, and that's correct. Aliyah Bulban could take the stand as early as today. Uh, so far, the jury has heard from the prosecution, other witnesses, even disturbing audio messages, and they have even seen a picture that Bulban sent to his mother back in October of 2021 after the killings. Take a listen. Do you recall talking to him on the phone? I just recall saying, you know, that's not funny. That's that's not funny, Holly. Don't say that. That's not funny. And then I received the picture. I looked and I deleted it right away. And I hung up the phone and I literally fell on the ground. And that is Aliyah Bulaban's mother as she took the stand yesterday before testifying. She blew a kiss to her son. She then talked about the call she got from a Bulaban saying he had just shot and killed his wife Anna and her friend Ray Barron. Now that picture she mentioned, I can tell you, is too gruesome to show on television. It shows Anna and Ray dead on her couch. The killings happened back in October of 2021 inside a luxury high-rise apartment in the East Village. While in court, a Bulaban's mom says her son was always hyper and eventually got diagnosed with ADHD. She also says he grew up in an abusive household beaten by his dad. Now, yesterday, at one point while in the courtroom, the deputy district attorney also accused Abulaban's mother about not telling the whole truth to try to protect her son. The mother says she, in fact, was being truthful. Abulaban's mom wrapped up just before lunch yesterday, so we did hear from another witness who's a friend of Abulaban's on the witness stand. They told the courtroom that they never noticed Abulaban being abusive towards Anna. In fact, it was Anna who had always been negative and unhappy happy and a Bulaban never understood why. So back out here, uh, we will be covering this. So we've covered this case since the beginning. So stick with CBS 8 as we get more details on this case. Eric Anetta, I'll send things back to you guys. Regina, thank you. This morning, police are now investigating a series of pellet gun shootings in Hillcrest as a possible hate crime. Someone shot at people in front of LGBTQ bars with a BB or pellet gun. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. Police are now connecting them to another shooting in Old Town. Police are adding extra patrols in Hillcrest for the next few days. We are learning new details about a shooting in Morena. San Diego police say officers shot and killed a man who robbed a store at knife point and threatened another man with the knife. Police say they caught up with the suspect, tried to detain him around 11 a.m. yesterday, but they say he resisted and ran to a homeless encampment near Friars Road and Morena Boulevard. They say he grabbed another man as a hostage and held the knife to his throat. That's when three officers shot at him. The suspect died. Nobody else was hurt. Per pro protocol, the sheriff's department is now investigating. And that was the second shooting involving San Diego police in less than 24 hours. We brought you this story as breaking news yesterday morning. It started with a domestic violence call in Choyas View after a woman said her ex-boyfriend threatened to shoot her and then took their baby. Authorities say the man refused orders to disarm himself and surrender. Authorities say that's when a police officer opened fire on the man while the baby was still in the suspect's arms. The suspect was taken to the hospital and the baby was not hurt. 
New this morning, one person is dead after severe turbulence aboard a flight from London to Singapore. The plane reportedly plummeted for about three minutes. Other people were hurt in this. The plane had to divert to Bangkok. It's still unclear how that person died. Well, today, County Supervisor Tara Lawson-Reamer will ask the board to oppose how State Farm and other insurance providers are pulling out their policies. This comes after homeowners across the county lost insurance coverage. CBS 8's Chris Grow live downtown working for you to find out what you can do if you're facing cancellation or denied a claim. This is happening to a lot of people, Chris. Uh, yeah, there's so much that's going on with, of course, anybody uh, owning a home right now and dealing with State Farm and the potential there for them to be pulling out here in July of this year. And for what for those of you at home that are currently dealing with that, you're not alone. We're talking about more than 70,000 Californians that are currently going to be dealing with this and as well as many, uh, many uh, homeowners here in the San Diego County who are also going to be dealing with this. Now, according to Tara Lawson Rima, she has over over 800 State Farm customers who are currently looking at what to do and where to go after they have been notified that they could be losing their home insurance policy. Now, the reason why this could be happening is because the state of California is currently undergoing one of the largest reforms to how it is that uh, insurance companies can operate here, one of the largest reforms in 30 years. And so some believe this could be a negotiation tactic, and some believe that State Farm is simply just trying to pull out because of the cost. Now, as for you, in terms of what you can do as a customer, there is the state-run California fair plan that may cost a bit more but it does provide fire insurance coverage for high risk properties when private insurance companies that you may be shopping around for may not take you on as a new customer so that state run agency could be a good stopgap here's a little bit more from county supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer 72,000 California residents including over 800 people in my county supervisorial district are losing their insurance coverage. I'm here to say that's not okay. Um, enough is enough. To a statement that State Farm put out in regards to this decision, they said, quote, this decision was not made lightly and only after careful analysis of State Farm's general's financial health, which continues to be impacted by inflation, catastrophe exposure, reinsurance costs, and limitations of working within decades-old insurance regulations. Now, of course, California trying to update their regulations and reforms. Uh, now, those of you who currently have State Farm and are being denied coverage claims, uh, there is one attorney who is looking at filing a class action lawsuit after their own personal water damage claims were denied, happening in the UTC area. For more information on that, you can go to CBS8.com, click on that story link to find their email and for more information on how to potentially join. Eric Anetta. All right, Chris, thanks. Right now, a new task force is being created to look into Ill illnesses that might be stemming from the Tijuana sewage crisis. Beaches in IB have been shut down for more than 900 days. A new task force includes IB's mayor, doctors, and researchers. They're looking into how sewage in the air might be making people sick. We're seeing a lot of people that are coming in with wheezing, coughing, so people with asthma of all ages, so young people, elderly people. Um, we actually looked at some numbers from this time last year to this year, and we've had a 140% increase in people requiring breathing treatments. Oh, some staggering numbers there. Soon they'll be rolling out a survey. The task force also aims to get the broken wastewater treatment plant fixed sooner and prevent sewage from Tijuana from spilling into San Diego. Of course, that's a problem mm. exacerbated when we get rain, which, uh, Netta, we haven't seen in quite a while. <laughs> Been pretty dry out there and, uh, and mm. blue as yes. well. Uh, blue skies to start off, which I know uh, it's kind of a rare sight. I guess we saw it over the weekend, uh, early Saturday morning, for example. But then during the week, it seems like we've been on this repeat of gray mornings. And now we see the sun coming through. So this morning, a lot of you waking up to clearer skies. Not so much North County, the coastline especially, but it does look like uh, across the South Bay, things are starting to clear and you can actually see that sun coming through. Uh, overall, the satellite imagery does show we had the marine layer pretty far inland overnight. And then early morning hours, this is the three hour loop, started to see it break apart, 
moving further back. So downtown, you might be getting a little bit of blue sky right now. Same with OB, perhaps maybe even Loya. This is our view from Mount Soledad, where it is clear at the top of the mountain. Over Mission Bay, not so much. And uh, so it does look like it's kind of hit or miss on your neighborhood. But 59 degrees, that's for downtown San Diego. And our west winds are a lot calmer this morning. 57 in Del Mar, 53 Poway, 55 in El Cajon. And that's part of the reason we're not seeing as much of that marine layer sticking around. Yesterday, it was pretty stubborn in the morning. But by the middle of the day, it did eventually clear. We had a little cooler weather kicking in. For today, expect it to be warmer, 71 by 1 o'clock in Ramona. So that should feel comfortable for a lot of you. Low 70s will be your highs in inland valleys along the coast in the mid to upper 60s. Hey, you might even hit 70 with that sun shining so much earlier. Three to five foot waves yet again, but no beach hazard statement today. Please note rip current risk is high though. So just be careful if you're not an experienced swimmer or surfer, you'll want to ask the lifeguards where to be. Uh, checking in on traffic, no major crashes that I see right now across all of San Diego. Uh, one thing do you want to mention this might impact you. Uh, the exit ramp from the 54 going southbound to Briarwood Road. The shoulder's blocked because of a stalled car, but that's kind of it. And you'll notice the five northbound starting to get a bit busy from Chula Vista into National City. More and more people are just headed out right now. Uh, but drive times are looking great. Five southbound, it'll only take you about eight minutes. Here's a look at the border web t wait times from Customs and Border Protection. 80 minutes to get through the San Ysidro port of entry. And the general line there in Otay Mesa will only take 60 minutes. Eric. All right, still ahead here, former President Donald Trump's social media account shares a post mentioning a, quote, unified Reich, what the campaign is saying about that. Plus authority to shut down the border, what a revived bipartisan bill includes. Planet Flip is a browser-based app that will bring the excitement of the game show to environmental causes. I'm Sean Stiles. We'll take a look at it coming up on CBS 8.